On this edition of your High Desert Sports Report, front runners clinch DSL and MRL titles. Victor Valley College Rams battle the Mount San Jacinto Eagles in a double overtime thriller. The Victor Valley College Rams make one huge clutch big time play after another, playing catch up most of the night in a bitterly intense rough and tumble battle against Mount San Jacinto before dropping an American Mountain Conference decision to the Eagles in double overtime. Freshman quarterback Trey Cox has his most productive game of the season, 21 completions for 244 yards and a touchdown. Sean White carries for 141 yards and scores twice. But the Rams are beset by incendiary penalties that require one miraculous comeback after another to send the game into overtime. Eric Parra and the Rams kick off to Mount San Jack to start the game. Mike Palsrock's slicing tackle pins the Eagles inside the 20. Mike Palsrock, 6 two 200 pound freshmen out of Lone Pine. VVC's major task defensively will be trying to contain the Eagles elusive dual threat quarterback Sheraron Jones. The visitors are forced to punt the ball away on their first possession. The Rams conduct a 10 play 74 yard scoring drive on their first possession capped by Sean White's 35 yard touchdown. The 5'9", 225-pound fullback is the Rams' leading ball carrier the second season in succession. The returning all-conference fullback has rushed for over 800 yards in the team's eight games this year. Sean White is out of basic in Henderson, Nevada. Mount San Jacinto responds with Sheraron Jones' 46-yard scramble that ties the score at seven, seven minutes in. The first quarter will end with the score tied at seven. Mount San Jacinto takes the lead on a field goal three minutes into the second quarter. The Rams mount a response that consumes five minutes off the clock but stalls when Trey Cox fourth down scramble comes up short. The Eagles try a little pre-Halloween trickery but no treat. The teams go on to exchange punts and we go to the Rams ball with 25 seconds showing before halftime. Trey Cox connects with Michael Bonham and the Rams are within field goal range. Dominic Hernandez kicks it through from 35 yards out and the teams go into the locker rooms tied at 10 at the intermission. Rams leading tacklers throughout the first half include 30, Justin Carroll, 5'10", 225 pound linebacker from Dickinson, Texas, and 27, James Zachary, 6'225 pound linebacker out of Orlando, Florida, both are freshmen. 41 is DJ Roper, sophomore linebacker out of Overland High School in Denver, Colorado. DJ Roper lists at 6'2", 215. Big playmakers include defensive lineman Kendall Blakely, seven, also out of Henderson, Nevada's basic like Sean White. Kendall Blakely is a six foot, 245 pound freshman. Delvin Spruill, nine, pulls down the Eagles quarterback for this second quarter sack. Delvin Spruill is a sophomore lineman, six to 290 from Alabama's Pickens County High School in Reform. The Rams' defense has to step it up a couple of notches after Mount San Jacinto intercepts a Trey Cox pass to NVBC's first third quarter possession. 280 pound Chris Rubin does just that, sacking the Eagles quarterback, and the visitors will miss a field goal attempt after advancing into the Rams' red zone. The second half parade of penalties has already begun though. Flags against both teams already in the third quarter and when Victor Valley College turns it over again, Mount San Jacinto capitalizes. The Eagles go up 17-10. How do the Rams respond to the adversity? Trey Cox to Khalil Brown, gain of 12, first down at the 32. Three successive Sean White carries and a major penalty against the Eagles and the Rams are in Mount San Jack territory at the 26. Trey Cox to Marique Pitts all the way down to the 8. 
Marik Pitts leads Rams receivers this night with eight receptions. The 5'6", 175-pound freshman is from Jacksonville, Florida's Duke and Fletcher High School. Compound mistakes befall the Rams. First, a false start backs them up. DVC has had to overcome two holding penalties this drive alone to advance to the red zone. And on their two previous possessions of the third quarter, the Rams turn the ball over. They go for the trifecta. In the turnover department, a fumble on the pass reception requires the officials to talk it over and sort it out. And Mount San Jacinto is awarded possession at the five. Once again, the Rams' defense is called upon to try and regain momentum. Justin Carroll, the tackle for a three-yard loss, and the Eagles will be punting the ball to the Rams to start the fourth quarter. Mount San Jack leads 17-10. Thus begins one of the Rams' most impressive offensive drives of the season. Leading ground gainer Sean White becomes dangerous pass receiver, the gain of 26 yards out to their own 43. To sustain the drive, the Rams must convert this fourth and two at the Eagles 23. Who else but Sean White? Six yards and a first down at the 17. Watch 70, 300-pound tackle Tron Simon Barrington, 55, 320-pound guard Rocky Sua. Sean White, five more to the 12. Sean White appears to be stopped at the line, but the driving power and extra effort of Sean White carries for five more and a first down at the seven. This is play number eight of a 16-play drive. I failed to mention the Rams had to overcome another holding penalty on the very first play of this possession. Victor Valley College looks to have scored on this completion to Marik Pitts, but the touchdown is waved off. Offensive pass interference is the call. The Rams are backed up to the 22. This Trey Cox offering toward Mike Obanum hits the turf and is incomplete, bringing up third and goal from the 22. Four penalty flags will be thrown on the next four plays. The Rams appear to have scored on the Trey Cox to Michael Bonham completion over the middle. Michael Bonham ruled down at the one. Two penalties against Mount San Jack on the play. Defensive holding declined, roughing the passer half the distance to inside the one. But a holding penalty against the Rams on the next play moves it back to the 11. Bringing up first and goal from the 11, Trey Cox to Ridge Ford to the three. Second and goal from the three, Sean White for one is followed by a Trey Cox pass batted down on third down. Fourth down, ball at the two, Trey Cox over the middle to Michael Bonham. Touchdown, Victor Valley College. The former Silverado Hawk comes through thanks to the perfectly thrown pitch from Trey Cox. This 16-play penalty-marred scoring drive consumes seven minutes off the fourth quarter clock. The all-important Dominic Hernandez, point after touchdown, is good. 17-17 with seven minutes to play in regulation. How fitting it would be had that splendid drive provided the Rams with the game-winning margin, but that is not how things have gone for Coach Dave Hoover and his Rams this season. They are coming off back-to-back -back defeats, the second of five-point setback at San Diego Mesa. Granted, Rams' miscues put them behind this game, as in behind the eight ball, but their resilience alone has been worthy of a W. Only this near-miraculous recovery of an Eagles fumble allowed the Rams to dodge a regulation play bullet after a roughing the passer penalty put the visitors in position to win the game. To make what becomes a very long story shorter, the teams battle to a scoreless tie at the end of regulation. There remained further heroics by Trey Cox and company in efforts to flip their fate. The game is prolonged by the seemingly endless stream of penalties mixed in with a handful of serious injuries. Mount San Jack scores on their possession in the first overtime. The Rams retaliate on Sean White's second trip into the end zone on the night. Quarterback Trey Cox pleads with coach Dave Hoover to go for two points on the conversion, especially after the Eagles are penalized half the distance, but the Rams opt to tie it back up on Dominic Hernandez's kick, and the game goes into a second overtime. 
The Rams' last desperate gasp is Draycox escaping the horse collar sack attempt on fourth down, resulting in the Eagles' interception. Mount San Jack kicks the game-winning field goal for the 27-24 victory in double overtime. Griner Buick GMC brings you Victor Valley College Sports Online Reports presented by Griner Buick GMC in Victorville. Griner supports Victor Valley College Rams. This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events. Apple Valley clinches their first Mojave River League football title in school history and first gridiron championship since the 1985 San Andreas League crown with a 43-13 victory at Sultana. Five different Sun Devils score, led by leading ground gainer Donovan Ferguson's two touchdowns, the second coming as sprinklers were going on. Jeff Widener throws a 33-yard scoring pass to Xander Witt and scores on a 50-yard run. Donovan Williams' 8-yard touchdown put the Sun Devils ahead to stay after Sultana had scored first. There were many familiar patterns repeated from the Sun Devils' previous victories, but one anomaly, Apple Valley fumbles on their first play from scrimmage. The Sultans' Juan Perez recovers. Sultana's ensuing touchdown marks the first time Apple Valley trails in a game since Barstow led 8-7 in the second quarter of Game 3. Michael Mendoza hits Sal Hernandez on the 8-yard scoring play. 7-0, Sultans, four and a half minutes in. Coach Keith Locklear's Sultans certainly were not intimidated by the Sun Devils. Their pregame chant rang more like taunting their visitors. The Sultans were met by the reality of Apple Valley's hard-hitting defense on the opening series. Seth Baker and Chad Smith laying the leather to the leader of the pregame chant. Sultana's defense is geared up to stop Apple Valley's running game. Defensive end and team captain Sean Evelyn, 79, leads tacklers. Sultana forces the Sun Devils into punt formation on their second possession. But the pass completion out of punt formation gets the ball in the hands of Donovan Williams, who carries for a first down at midfield. Two plays later, from the 33, Jeff Widener connects with Xander Witt and the Sun Devils are on the scoreboard. 5-12 on the first quarter clock. It is tied at seven. Familiar patterns repeated. The opponent special teams turnover early in the game. Kai Merchant's monstrous hit on the Sultan kick returner sends the ball into the air. It will be Uriah Dominguez, 24, winning the battle for possession. Apple Valley's offense back on the field at the 40. The Jeff Widener to Xander Witt connection across the middle advances the ball into the red zone. Xander Witt on the receiving end of two of Jeff Widener's three completions on the night. The Sun Devils turn the turnover into points on the scoreboard. Watch 72, 282 pound sophomore Cole Mayo with the block. Donovan Williams straight up the middle. The senior running back, 93 total yards offense on the night. 70 on his 21 carries. Second touchdown in a 90-second time span by the explosive Sun Devils offense, 14-7 Apple Valley at the three and a half minute mark in the first quarter. The Sultans bound and determined to answer. Sal Hernandez for five yards coming this way before driven out of bounds by Xander Witt, number one. The Sultan's O-line gives Mike Mendoza time to pass, but it is broken up by Seth Baker, 29, whose long locks escape his helmet, making one wonder if the all-league free safety has Sun Devils Dynasty confused with Duck Dynasty. The Sun Devils start from deep in their own territory following a Sultana punt. This drive benefiting from the Kashan Griffin pass reception, good for 25 yards and a first down at the 40. Kashan Griffin is gaining steps toward full recovery from a leg injury. That spells trouble for the Hesperia Scorpions next week and Apple Valley postseason opponents. 
This play should have ended the first quarter. The pass completion to Seth Baker. Solid hit downfield by the Sultans 10, Francisco Aguiar. A penalty nullifies the game though. Sultana forces Apple Valley to punt. And at the end of the first quarter of play, it is 14-7 Sun Devils. An outstanding Isaac Miles punt pins the Sultans back at their one. The Sun Devils force a three and out and on the exchange of punts, benefit from excellent field position. Sultana's defense forces Apple Valley into a fourth down play from the 30 and Jeff Widener carries for 27 yards into the red zone. Tyler Pele, 42, in on the touchdown saving tackle. The six foot 190 pound senior and co-captain is a returning all Mojave River League linebacker. Three plays later, Donovan Ferguson carries into the end zone, 105 yards on the night on 12 carries for Donovan Ferguson. Ninth rushing touchdown of the year for the 5'10", 160-pound junior. The Isaac Miles kick is good. By night's end, the senior kicker will be 32 of 34 on the season in PATs. Four and a half minutes remain in the second quarter, 21-7 Sun Devils. Michael Mendoza leads the Sultans into Apple Valley territory, rifling the pass completion to favor a receiver cell Hernandez, two, the junior. Mike Mendoza completes 12 of 20 this night for 117 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Apple Valley defensive end Kai Merchant single-handedly thwarts a further advance on this Sultana possession, running down the Sultans quarterback on this play for a loss of two yards. Next play, the six foot, 175 pound, two-time all Mojave River League merchant of misfortune for opponents, wrestles the quarterback down for a sack. The teams exchange punts the remainder of the second quarter. The halftime score holds at 21-7. Strange occurrences await in the third quarter. The Sun Devils withstand a lights-out blackout two minutes into the second half and another 15-minute delay in the action when the sprinklers come on at J. Reed Field, contributing to an unforgettable set of circumstances. Sultana preceded the unusual circumstances by forcing the Sun Devils into a third and long at midfield. What follows combines Jeff Widener's decision-making skills with his raw physical talent. The 6'2", 185-pound junior avoids the pass rush, tucks it in, turns on the afterburners, sheds one defender, and outruns the rest. 50 yards. The touchdown on what might qualify as the biggest play of the night. 90 seconds into the second half, the Sun Devils have extended their lead to three touchdowns, 28, 7, 20 seconds later, game clock seconds, the lights go out at J. Reed Field. Play is interrupted for 15 minutes despite Sultana fans' willingness to light the field with their own candle power. The delay does not diminish Sultana's drive and intensity. Extra effort on this pass reception by Maurice Hawkins results in a gain of 11 yards and a first down. Sultana's first possession of the second half ends when the fourth down completion to Angelo Mestandria comes up short. The sophomore wide receiver will score Sultana's second touchdown on a 36-yard fourth quarter reception. Apple Valley has taken over on downs. Donovan Ferguson's 30-yard run brings the ball into Sultana's red zone. Two plays later, second and goal at the seven, Donovan Ferguson cuts off Jesse Griego's block, barrels over a Sultana defender at the goal line just as sprinklers go on, creating another 15-minute break in the action. When play resumes, Apple Valley goes for two to avoid a long snap situation on the very wet turf. Donovan Ferguson also scores the two-point conversion, and the Sun Devils are pulling away 36-7. The Sun Devils go for win number 10 in the first undefeated season in school history when they host the Hesperia Scorpions on Thursday, November 2nd. Apple Valley last won a league gridiron championship in the mid-80s, winning back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back San Andreas League titles in 1983, 84, 85. 
As longtime observer Thomas Leo Gerling points out, 1985 was the last time the Chicago Bears won the Super Bowl, Ronald Reagan was president, a postage stamp was 22 cents, gas $1.24 a gallon. Apple Valley's quarterback in that 1985 season was Keith Widener, father of today's junior signal caller Jeff Widener. The Sun Devils' offensive line averaged 200 pounds in the mid-80s, today's monstrous O-line averages 260 pounds. Desert High Transportation previews high school football's crucial encounters for teams battling for a playoff berth in both Desert Sky League and Mojave River League regular season finales. The Victor Valley Jackrabbits are taking on the Barstow Aztecs in the longest standing rivalry game west of the Mississippi, the battle for the Axe. And what is at stake is second place in the Desert Sky League standings and a playoff berth. The winner moves on, the loser sees their season come to an end. The Aztecs are under first year coach Kurt Mitchell, his first battle for the Axe, the biggest game of his inaugural season. A similar scenario taking place in Hesperia Friday night Serrano is at Oak Hills. A victory for Diamondbacks first-year coach Casey Mahalchek keeps playoff hopes alive. Both the Diamondbacks and Bulldogs have undergone rebuilding seasons. This is the first time in the history of the Mojave River League that neither the Diamondbacks nor Bulldogs are league champions. That's because Apple Valley is in its best season in school history, looking to finish undefeated when they close out regular season play against last place Hesperia Thursday night. The Sun Devils have already clinched at least a tie for the Mojave River League title. Apple Valley remains the top ranked team in CIF Division 10. The Desert Sky League title has also been decided the Silverado Hawks closing out their regular season slate last week, running the table against DSL foes for the Hawks' second straight league championship. Friday night regular season finales in the DSL include Granite Hills, the Cougars hosting the Atalanto Saints. The winner closing out their season, securing their first league victory of the year. Desert High Transportation brings you this video sports action highlights report. Desert High Transportation provides reliable and dependable non-emergency transportation for ambulatory and wheelchair passengers. Desert High Transportation, ardent supporters of high desert teams, athletes, and sports programs. Desert High Transportation. Call 760-998-1487 to set up your appointment. There is an extraordinary new item available for parents of very young children. It's called the Travel Tray. Its function is to enable the parent who is driving to keep their eyes on the road to drive safely and confidently with this unique, handy, mess-free snack and drink tray. With distracted driver fatalities on the rise, the Travel Tray folks became determined to come up with a way to give the parenting motorist more control and less chaos in their car. The answer? The Travel Tray. To ensure safety for the child and parent alike, the Travel Tray is manufactured in the USA with BPA-free, PHT-free, and PVC-free, FDA, and California Prop 65 approved materials. It's environmentally friendly by being top rack dishwasher safe. Tech has become the sweetheart of national and international trade shows, but kid and family products continue to reign supreme when it comes to crowded convention centers. Millennial mom Jenna Barnett is here, uh, fresh from the ABC Expo, the largest baby and kid trade show of the year. Welcome. Thank you. So where was this expo? How many products did they have? In Las Vegas, there was like over 3,000 booths, over 600 brands. Oh my goodness. It was pretty crazy. And you <laughs> uh, picked uh, for us and went through this whole thing and picked your favorites. Yes. When I take my daughter in the car, she needs a snack. If we're going anywhere further than 10 minutes, she needs a snack. Right. And I've tried. I'm the same way, by the way. I know. Yeah. Aren't we all? Yeah. <laughs> so I've tried Ziploc bags. I've tried snack cups, but they always get spilled or dropped out of reach. And I'm driving. She's crying. 
I'm about to cry. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so glad that travel tray was invented. Um, this is a portable travel tray. You just stick this part inside the uh, cup holder of the car seat. Oh, and you can still put, you know, a bottle or a sippy cup inside. And then you can place the snacks directly snack in the tray. So it's always within reach for my daughter. I can stay focused on the road, which is what's most important. She has to be perfect for the charcuterie. A little <laughs> charcuterie while yeah. you're driving and you have the Great idea, Frank. to drink inside. That's perfect right. stuff. Travel Tray just completed its successful Kickstarter launch and is currently shipping trays to its early supporters. Shipments to retail stores and direct to consumers begin in early November in time for holiday travel and gift giving. Midway Home Solutions Action Highlights. This video sports online report presented by Midway Home Solutions. Midway features a huge selection of kitchen appliances, home and laundry appliances, electronics, furniture, and mattresses. Midway Home Solutions. Down Home Grill Action Highlights Online Sports Report. Down Home Grill, corner of Bear Valley Road and Ridgecrest Drive, Victorville. The races for the Wheel to Wheel Track Championships get closer by the race. Two points separate first and second place drivers in two classes. This spooktacular event Pro 500 Maine has Buck Blair, Brian Struder, Daniel Bennett, and John Aiden battling lap after lap. Buck Blair 39, Brian Struder white 10, John Aiden white 7, Daniel Bennett Black 29. Defending track champion Daniel Bennett remains in the lead in season points by two points, entering the second to last race of the season. Daniel Bennett has 94 season points. John Eaton's fourth place finish gives him 92. Buck Blair will pull from the pack to take the checkered. Brian Struder just edges out Daniel Bennett for second. Brian Struder had narrowly edged Buck Blair earlier in this hotly contested heat race on a night that saw a number of finishes in heat races and main events come down to the wire. The spooktacular was a frightfully enjoyable night for the Struder family. Not only did Brian Struder come in second in the Pro 500 main, son Braden, also driving the white 10, wins the intermediate class main. Ten-year-old Braden was Rookie of the Year last year. Braden Struder and Dad Brian race out of Murrieta. Stevie Rogers, three, comes in second in the intermediate main. Ricky Simpson, 29, is the season points leader in the intermediates class with 91 points, a narrow two-point lead over Trent Johnson, who finishes third in the spooktacular main. In one of the closest races of the night, Rookie of the Year frontrunner Justin Taylor, 33, takes the restrictor plate main, edging season points leader Daniel Smithson, green 88. Daniel Smithson has 101 season points, 30 points more than his closest challenger. Kayla Pollard, the wild child, finishes third in the spooktacular restrictor class main. Wild Bill Martin wins the spectacular Dirt Cart Seniors Main, extending his unsurmountable season points total to 114, 50 points more than second place Ryan Bond. Will Brown, 84, is on his way to winning the Dirt Cart's Junior Track Championship. Will Brown's third place gives him 97 season points. Maxwell Tippett's 88 wins the Junior's Carts Main, giving him 70 season points, good for third in season standings. This Saturday's Wheel to Wheel Shootout gives challengers another shot at overcoming season points leaders before the November 18th season championship finale. I-15 Auctions, sold on supporting high desert sports. I-15 Auctions, from estate auctions to high quality used vehicles at low, low prices.
This is your High Desert Sports Report, the Victor Valley's only weekly action highlights sports program. Covering our area's schools, teams, athletes, and sporting events.